Hello, 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 and welcome back to the Women's Rugby Show. I'm Sam Barber, and today I'm bringing you something a little bit different for your midweek Women's Rugby Fix. So I'm going to be speaking to two of the stars from last weekend's Allianz Premier 15's action, and it's two from the Northern teams as well, because who doesn't love a Northern success? I'll be speaking to Laura Perrin from Sail Sharks Women after their historic victory and last-minute victory over Exeter Chiefs Women at Hayward Road, and what a try that was from Holly Borden as well in that last minute. And I'll be speaking to Beth Blacklock from DMP Durham Sharks after their first win of the season away at Bristol Bears Women. Elsewhere in the Premier 15s are wins for Saracens at Loughborough, wins for Wasps at Gloucester Harper, and also a win for Harlequins at home to Worcester Warriors. That's before we talk about the Six Nations and Italy's win in Scotland and France's win in Ireland. Some great women's rugby will take, took place over the weekend, so make sure you check out all the highlights. They're all available across YouTube, across social media, including on the RFU's YouTube page. But before we get into this video, where we'll be speaking to two players who've shone over the weekend and we're really impressed with them. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to the Women's Rugby Show on YouTube if we aim to reach a thousand subscribers. Hopefully we'll get that before the end of the season and also check us out across all social media as well. Well, Laura, thanks for joining us on the Women's Rugby Show. And how are you? How are you? How's your weekend been? Obviously the game at the weekend, that's what we're here to talk about, but how are you in general? Yeah, I'm really well, thank you. Um, I think, as you said, just coming off the back of a of a of a good weekend, um, getting the win against uh, Exeter. Yeah, obviously, let's talk about the game, the last minute try. What were the kind of emotions going through the team and the squad at that moment when that try went over? Um, I think probably uh, probably a lot of disbelief because um, we defended for quite a large portion of the game, and then I think. It was well over the kind of 70 minutes that had already been played. And then suddenly uh, we're going from defending and the next thing we're all under the sticks and, and how um, Holly Ward had managed to intercept the try. Um, so, yeah, a little bit surreal. I think a lot of emotions definitely running high. And I think as some of the pictures show, obviously, uh, jubilation. Mm. Yeah, some of the pictures, I think there was one that we saw on Twitter and retweeted. I think, I can't remember who it was. It might have been Omega Photos or something like that. Um tweeted the emotion of those pitches. How much is that down to kind of the team spirit and the team ethos within the Shark squad? I think it's massive. Um, I think, especially with a performance like that, um, it just showed how much that it meant to us to be able to, to, to turn over a team like Exeter. Um, and I think, especially coming off the back of a, a hard couple of games where we might have been disappointed with our results, obviously just showing ourselves and showing everybody else that obviously we're not, a team just there to make good numbers with some we're a team that can definitely contend with the best um and i think it was just being able to have everything like that and everything clicked together on the day i think it's just um shown really well in uh, in chris's uh, in amiga's uh, photo what's <coughs> sorry what's it kind of been like being a shark this season obviously it's a new club um new club new a whole new team whole new setup what's it been like being part of that first year Oh, I think it's just been unbelievable. Um, I mean, myself coming from, um, I'm a Northwest born and bred girl. Like um, I say quite a lot, but I've always, uh, I've always followed the club. I went to my first game about age eight or nine. Um, so being able to come into that environment from day one, year one, um, it's just been something that I, I never really thought we, that, that, that could happen. Um, obviously, the facilities and the staff and um, everybody within that environment are just fantastic. They know what they want. We're so clued on with with the direction that we want to take the team and obviously trying to build and take that to new heights. Yeah, obviously, I'm from up there as well, Sale fan. Um, but how important do you think it is for the area in kind of not just women's rugby, but rugby as a whole that Sale have a successful women's programme? And obviously, there was Waterloo. There's the MP further up north. How important is the major Northwest club having a really strong women's team to the game? I think it's massive. Um, just as a club, it, it kind of completes that almost uh, just that whole ethos of having one club um, with multiple teams, obviously supporting the, the women's section. Obviously, with Sale being the only professional uh, men's rugby outfit in the Northwest, having and being affiliated with them uh, just massively boosts our profile. Um, and even in the last year, obviously I, I, I came over from Waterloo um, and I have nothing but love and respect for Waterloo. But in the last year or so, kind of going around and um, going to different um, areas, um, just being able to see, and, and sorry, when I'm coaching, uh, just being able to see kind of 
the in, in the increased number of girls in the game people saying like oh yeah we, we watched we tune into the live stream and just kind of those sorts of resources the club's able to provide so like we I think the weekend's game was sadly the only game that wasn't live streamed this whole game sorry the whole season uh, at home uh, so being able to have those sorts of resources being able to to boost the profile to be able to push the women's team um it's, we've, we've definitely been able to see kind of in the local areas the impact that's had with, I said, with increased participation uh, and girls ultimately looking up to us as role models, which is fantastic. You mentioned the coaching. So what is that coach, coaching you doing? Is it through the Sharks community or is it just something else? Yes. Yeah, so recently I've just uh, started coaching through uh, the Sharks Trust. Um, I also coach myself at my local club over at Fylde. Um, but yeah, so for example, I think in the past week uh, we, we did a couple of mini juniors camps and obviously the, the number of girls there and being able to have um, the uh, myself and the Paris Reading twins and Daisy Hibbert Jones being able to be there and say, oh, obviously we're, we're uh, Sharks women's players and for the girls to look up to us, ask us any questions, stuff like that, and be, be a reachable and uh, ultimately accessible role models. Um, and hopefully, obviously, that's going to help grow the game in the local area for the foreseeable. Yeah, those mini and junior camp bring back memories when I was eight <laughs> or nine. Um, obviously, we mentioned the first season, mentioned extra at the weekend. How is, do you feel the season's progressed for the Sharks, just from the start to kind of now? Oh, I, I, well, well we, we joke about how far we've come uh, since that first game against Loughborough, um, saying with uh, some of the kind of the 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 set piece, some of the moves, stuff like that, saying, oh, we'd only just managed to figure out what this is. And then obviously now we're starting to add a lot more complex plays in. I think there's no comparison really. But I think what the best thing is, is that even though we were that fresh and that um, that new to the whole environment, we, we've been competitive from day one, uh, which is something personally that I was uh, a little bit nervous coming into. Um, as I said, there's a massive credit to just the environment, to the staff, to the players, to the culture that we've all managed to create in such a short and such a difficult time scale. Um, um, yeah. yeah, sorry, I've lost my train of thought. Sorry. Obviously, you've got the legend that is Katie Daly McLean at 10 playing kind of yeah. inside you. How has it been kind of learning from her and playing in and around her all season? Oh, it's been fantastic. Um, uh, I'm very fortunate, I think, definitely to be able to to learn off somebody uh, somebody uh, such as herself, um, and to be able to build a good relationship with her. Um, obviously, her knowledge and just her just how much of the game that she understands is just admirable. <laughs> I've never I've never met somebody who who gets the game as much as her, and being able to play obviously just outside of her is just uh, something again that I'd never really envisioned. I think I said the other day um, to my to my dad saying. Um, if somebody had told me a year ago that um, that I'd be kind of having this many kind of jokes, being able to learn that much of somebody like her, um, I'd, I'd be saying that you were uh, you'd be barking up the wrong tree there. Um, but she's so approachable. I think she probably gets sick of me asking so many questions. But um, I think in terms of my own game, um, from kind of that day one, year one to where we are now, what in April the following year, um, again it's just been a massive leap forward for my game and I'm still excited to continue learning off her and to, to, to keep building. Obviously you've got the kind of the blend of the KTs and you've got the Welsh internationals, you've got Lauren Delaney and Irish international. We've also got a lot of local Northwest young players. Do you think that blend of experience and international experience as well as kind of local knowing the club is quite important for the team ethos and that the team going forward? Yeah, I think it's it's a massive part of, of who we are who we are. Um ever since we came into that first training session, I think it was back at the end of July. Um that's always been a big part of who we are. We are Northwest born and bred. And it's the same kind of ethos running through uh the women's section as it is through the main club itself, especially with kind of the growth of the uh uh, in the men's setup with a lot of the academy boys, Northwest born and bred boys going into the first team. It's something that they were massive on from day one. Obviously being able to have those players who 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 live up north and then maybe bringing in a couple extra people. Um, just them being able to build on uh, on on those sorts of foundations with those Northwest born and bred players to to establish that identity of 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 the club. Um, I think there's just so much knowledge and um yeah, again, just an understanding of the game being thrown around and everyone's continuously learning. Um, and obviously looking for the future, having that young player base from base in the Northwest, again, um, 
builds those role models for the for the girls around this area and it also means that going forward we've got a strong identity a strong culture and a really good player base um where people are picked more on say merit than maybe just because they're name stars if that makes sense Obviously, I mentioned the Welsh internationals, but you've got Jess Roberts, who's in the call-up from her performances for sale. You've got all these Welsh girls getting into camp because of their performances. Do you think that's kind of um, kind of inspirational for the young girls who are coming through, that they, they, they can have these aspirations to represent their country? Yeah, definitely. Um, showing that, well, through hard work and dedication, um, that obviously they're then rewarded for, for what they're showing. Um, I think, with especially with Jess Roberts um, and Tells, uh, both of which have been massive for us this season. And it's only um, fair that they've received their call-ups. Um, but yeah, obviously it just shows that that sort of level of dedication that they're putting in just shows everybody else in the squad that obviously that's what can happen. And obviously everyone's there to, to be the best version of themselves um, and to, to become the best player that they can be. And then obviously try and push forward and showing that that is possible and to just to continue pushing. Obviously, Loughborough last game of the season is kind of the lead, lead coming full circle. What kind of would you like out of that game? Obviously, you want to win, but to complete your season, wouldn't it be nice to just have a full circle round performance to end your first season? Yeah, definitely. Um, we've talked all year about having um, a solid, uh, I would say 80 minutes, but it's 70 minutes, isn't it? Having a solid 70 minute performance. And I think on some occasions, we've, we've, maybe, um, we've maybe had good first half or a good second half, but it's not quite been there until um, until this last weekend. So I think the biggest thing is being able to carry that sort of game, carry that sort of momentum into that last into that last game. Um, obviously, as you said, we, uh, we're, we're there to go, sorry, we'll be there to go and try and win the game. Um, but I think in terms of going full circle, just being able to put in a really solid performance, um, have some great individual performances, uh, keep working on our targets that we've had identified all season um, and just keep f pushing forward um, and hopefully then uh, build some momentum to then take into the pre-season for next year. Looking ahead, so first of all, personally, where kind of do you want your next season, your next few seasons to go? And then where do you want the sales next season, next few seasons to go? Um, I think personally, um, I'm just uh, happy enjoying my rugby. Um mm -hmm happy playing at sale, just trying to be the best version of me. Um, obviously, I'd love to um, to play for my own country, um, but I think at this at this time, the most important thing is just to just to keep working as hard as I can to keep uh, to keep building, to keep working on those skills, to keep learning from those players such as Katie, uh, Delaney, Jess Wooden, um, and just to ultimately see if I can keep on adding to my game. Um, and I think in terms of in terms of sale, um, I think obviously we've added by targets of of what we want to do as, as a club as a team um and i think again it's just next year obviously i think this first year has been mainly about being competitive getting some of those wins um and then next year i think we're really starting to go from say from fifth gear into sixth gear to really try and rev it up to really try and compete with those top four sides um to get some uh to get some big big uh victories to uh to keep on working on those targets that we've identified. Yeah, you mentioned kind of your own game and work on that. Where do you feel like that's come? How far do you feel like it's grown from the start of the season to now? Where do you feel like your strongest areas are in your own personal game? Um, I like to think I've got a, a mix of a, of a running game, a, a passing game and a kicking game. Um, I think in terms of where I've come from the start of the season, my game understanding is probably the biggest thing that's grown. Um, being in uh, an environment where I'm able to learn off of so many people. So as I said, like Katie, for example, but also all the coaching staff helping me. Um, we get all of our, obviously all of our training sessions recorded. So being able to watch that back. And then if there's anything that's uncertain or anything that I want to know or, or things that maybe I could have done better, then obviously I've always got that option to go to people just to ask and inquire. Um, and I think um, having, having that and then, uh, sorry, I've completely lost my train of thought there. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that game understanding has just come on massively, though. Um, and then maybe necessarily just um, just looking at when to do those sorts of options, so when to run, when to kick, when to pass, um, 
looking back on my games, feeding back on my own games, looking around, oh, sorry, asking other people for feedback. Um, yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really not. Um, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, really congratulations again for the weekend and good luck for Loughborough and enjoy the rest of your free summer as well once it, hopefully with everything opening back up as well. Thank you very much, Sam. Take care. Beth, thanks a lot for joining us on the Women's Rugby Show. First of all, how are you? How's your day been so far? No worries. Uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, um, I'm well. I'm just uh, I'm at the library. I'm hiding away in the stairwell. <laughs> um, yeah, no good. Just uh, getting back into uni work after the weekend, the, the long journey away. <laughs> Yeah, so mentioning the long journey, but long journey, but a successful one and it must have been a great one as well. <laughs> yeah, no, it was definitely the most fun weekend out of all of them. <laughs> um, no, yeah, it was, it was a great game and a great weekend and really good for, for Sharks to have that win. Yeah, kind of, what, what do you think happened this weekend in that game against Bristol? What do you think went right for kind of the result to come that first win of the season? Um, I think there have been lots of improvements going throughout the season. I think, especially after Christmas, you could see a big boost in, in terms of how we've been playing, the structure and things like that. So I think this weekend, we kind of, we all went into the game thinking, right, we've got a few games left. We had a good game last weekend um, and we kind of want to show what we've been working on, the structure that we've put in place. And, and to be perfectly honest, the girls really just brought it on Saturday. Um, everybody kind of stepped out into the pitch. Everyone was on the same page. And it just kind of felt like we were flowing and it was it was really fun playing rugby on the front foot and everyone decided, yeah, we're going to do that full 70. So. Yeah. There's, some, there's been some great pictures I've seen from the win. How much is that down to kind of the team spirit and the team ethos and that everyone's stuck together so far this season? Um, yeah, it was... It was an incredible thing for us. I think the fact that we've turned up week in, week out, um, no matter what the scoreline, like you can tell everyone loves rugby and just wants to be there. And so after the game, the first thing we did, we went through the tunnel, we went straight to the post because we just wanted to have a photo just to have that big celebration straight away. Because, I mean, that was the biggest thing for the girls this season. And it was such an incredible thing to celebrate and to be able to say, actually, going from the start of the season to where we are now, that's something we should be really proud of. Um, and we were so happy to celebrate it. Has it been kind of difficult to go through this season having like a couple of tough, heavy losses, as well as some narrow losses where you've been really into the game? Has it been difficult to kind of keep that team spirit high and keep the drive to win the game high? Yeah, I think everyone can say that it was really hard. Um, I know going into a game you always want to go in and say right we're going to win this because that's the mentality you've got to go going in and so psyching yourself up and then coming out of the game and having to psych yourself down was really hard but going through that as well as a team and as players together um I think the perfect was the cohesion has just kind of improved week in week out and then now that we're starting to actually see the improvements on the pitch the self-belief is just skyrocketing and especially after Saturday um, it's just it's something that we're going to try and ride the high on and, and keep it going and get the Sharks campaign really starting now. Yeah. Obviously it's that the three-year cycle this is the year one of the three-year cycle how important do you think that win on Saturday may be going ahead for the next two years? I mean I think it's huge I mean the support from people at DMP in Durham has already gone up since this week like everybody was straight away on the phone because it was the first sign of the fact that actually we are moving in the right direction um and it was the first sign that actually um the next two years what we have in place what we have in store we are going to get there and like we are going to keep improving we are going to work our hardest to get to that um building a platform where we can have those international players and that northern team and presence in place um, so I think Saturday was instrumental in making sure that everybody kind of sees that, yeah, this is something that we can do. And this is this is where we start now. Now we've, we've had that start. We've had that win. Let's go forward from here and really take it on. Obviously, you've got those links with Durham as a club. How important has that link been throughout the season to kind of help progress and help um, perform to the highest standard you can? Um, I think it's a very good link. Um, Durham can bring a lot in terms of facilities, um, in terms of just being able to facilitate um, where we can improve, so the gym, the nutrition, 
and things like that um so I think I think it's been good we used it a lot more after Christmas I think with um the Madden Park becoming a vaccination place so actually moving to Durham meant that everything was kind of in the same place and having that access and things you could really see that I mean first of all it was it was a huge improvement for everybody because we we could kind of start fresh because we had a new training place we had a new um gym and things like that but also it's just it's quality facilities I and mean, they put billions of pounds into this new facility and so the fact that we get to use it now also just brings in that professional um area which which means that everybody again just kind of feels like yeah we are in a premiership yeah we should be performing week in and week out and yeah we should be setting that and holding ourselves accountable to really show that we are professional athletes in in the women's premiership obviously yourself you're still at uni how have you um found balancing your time this year obviously COVID is making everything even more difficult so how have you balanced that time um well I mean, actually I think that the COVID stopping us from being able to go anywhere has helped me a little bit <laughs> um because it means that I've been able to stay at home and do my physio and my studying at the same time and not have to worry about leaving the house at 7am with five meals with me before I get back at 10 um so I've, I've found it a lot more helpful <laughs> um but I mean it's, it's it's always going to be something that you've got to balance with the women's rugby you you need to know that now in terms of work and playing as well until you get to that international level it's something you've got to balance um so I think it's just being organized <laughs> um I think I've come to master it a bit <laughs> um but it's, it, yeah it's just it's just something you've got to just try and and do to play the sport that you love it's it's kind of just something you've got to do rather than something that's a problem just got to work through it yeah how understanding a dmp around if you've got issues if you've got a deadline and you're gonna struggle to do something how understanding are they of that for you um they're they're fully understanding i mean everything that's physical you've got to mentally be there as well and you've got to be having that recovery like it's you have the whole cycle so um they would never be un not understanding if you had to do some work but also you need to make sure that you put in the effort to to make sure that you're prepared so that you can try and limit what you miss but I mean it's also down to you it's, it's your playing it's your physicality it's your it's your body that if you haven't prepared enough and you have to miss a session that's down to you so it's all it's all holding yourself accountable to be honest and, and sharks do the best to help facilitate um, you doing the best in every area of your life so it's just using what they give you um, to try and try and make it as productive as you can. You mentioned the Northern Club before obviously the other Northern Club in the Premier 15 has got a big win over the week at the weekend as well Sale. How nice is it to see two Northern Clubs when there's not really any prominent rugby teams in the North, North West, North East having them both win on the same day two quite big wins as well? Yeah, no, it was good. It was, it was good to see the Sharks power this weekend. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's good to see that it's spreading everywhere. Because I know that in the past, everyone's always um, felt that they've had to move to the South to get the quality rugby and move to the South to get the quality set up. So these two teams really put in hard work to make sure that the rugby is spread across the whole of the UK. It's just, it's going to come up for women's rugby. It means that spectators will have access to it everywhere. Um, and just no matter where you are, you've got that local premiership club that you can go and play at, which I think is just, it's going to be great for women's rugby in the long run. So it's, it's fantastic seeing two Northern teams really, really show it on Saturday. Yeah, and looking ahead to the next two seasons, first of all, kind of personally, where do you want your rugby career to go? Where do you want your rugby life to go? And then how do you want DMP to progress over those next two years as well? Um, looking over the next few years, you've always got to aim as high as you can get. So I would always say that I would love to be playing for England. Um, so I'm just going to work the hardest that I can to, to get there myself. And DMP are working their hardest to make sure that they can make an environment that will facilitate that. I think DMP, they knew that it was going to be a three-year thing. So this year was very much, we've got a young team, we've got a fresh start, um, and we're working on building it from there. So I think over the next couple of years it'll be looking to make sure that that platform is set for the professional environment so then they are doing all that they can to make sure that they've got the right environment to really excel players and bring up that that um, environment where you can have those international players improve and perform week in week out um, so then it's then it's down to the players to to listen and take on board what the coaching and the management team are doing 
um, and, and helping them get there. And hopefully Sharks are gonna keep working at the table and by the end of the three years, it's, it's gonna be obvious that we, we should hopefully keep the license. Obviously, um, the Red Roses is Six Nations. They've called up a lot of inexperienced international players um, who've performed well in the Premier 15s. Does that kind of give you the inspiration to say, oh, I can do this. I can just keep pushing my game and I can get there. Yeah, I mean, 100%. The Red Roses are very good at making sure that they have the depth. Um, so a lot of the players who have been playing well this season hugely deserve to have that rose. And so it is great testament to England, the fact that they are just going to go, out, well, you're performing, so we're going to bring you in, um, which means 100%. Week in, week out, you just go out on the pitch and you think, I've got to show everything that I have so that they know what I've got in my arsenal and they know that that they can call me up whenever they want. <laughs> Perfect. So thanks a lot for talking to us today. Um, enjoy your lunch break from your revision and enjoy the rest of your revision as well today. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me.